Hello and welcome to Rules Kitchen. Christophe Rull here, a professional chef and a cast member of the famous baking show Bake Squad. I am a French born from south of France and came to US to live the American dream. And this YouTube channel was created for all of you around the world with one main goal in mind is to share one recipe at a time and to create joy on your dining table. And if you follow Rules Kitchen, there is no reason to fail. So today, we are going to make a beautiful chocolate truffle, dark chocolate, 64%. And I am going to show you three different toppings, but obviously, it's up to your creativity. Are you ready? Put your apron on and let's get started. Let's go over the ingredients. So we have our heavy whipping cream, our honey, butter, Thaïsian vanilla bean, and a 64% dark chocolate. So the first things we're going to do is to put our cream inside our pot. And don't forget to scrape the bowl, always. You don't want to waste any drop, okay? Then the honey. the butter and we are going to scrape the vanilla bean. The way you want to scrape the vanilla bean is pretty much we are going to use the tip of our knife right in the middle and then you will cut it all the way down. Then with the back of your knife you are going to scrape the vanilla bean. to remove all the seeds. And we repeat in the other side. Voila. And then we put our vanilla bean inside our pot. So this uh, vanilla is coming from uh, uh, Nelson Massey. It's a really uh, nice uh, brand, one of the best in the market and uh, you actually can find the link uh, down below if you're interested to get some. And now we bring everything to a boil. And once it's boiling, you want to pour everything on your chocolate using a strainer. And the strainer will help to um, keep all the fibers from the vanilla bean and obviously the vanilla bean as well. So you will obtain only the seeds from the vanilla bean. Tac. And then we can mix um, the ganache until uh, everything is combined together. So what you want to do is to create an emulsion. So you see right now I am mixing uh, from the middle and I am making sure to mix a little bit of the liquid little by little until everything is well combined. And what I like to use also it's a um, uh, hand mixer just to make sure my emulsion is well uh, made and the chocolate is all combined with everything else. All right, so I'm going to explain you something. Right now, the bowl that I have on the left side is a little bit too big. So when I try to mix it, the emulsion is not being created the way that I would like to be created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ganache and I'm going to use a smaller bowl. And you'll see the difference. Right now, this is a little bit separated. And when I'm going to mix it inside a container that is small enough, so that's why it's really important to pick the size of your container accordingly to the recipe that you're doing, things will get much better. Voilà. 
Voilà. Oh yes, much, much better now. And if you see that your ganache is still not combined really well together, you can always add a little bit of water. Perfect consistency. A really nice and beautiful shiny ganache. So right now I am going to take my piping bag and I am using a tip number 805 from Ateco. I am going to cut the tip of my piping bag. Voilà. Then my tip all the way. And then what I'm doing, as always, if you saw a previous video, I am taking some of my uh, piping bag inside my tip. So when I pour my ganache inside, it will not leak out. So I like to use a little cone or a little uh, glass in that matter. So I can put my bag inside the cup. And then my two hands are free. So I can pour my chocolate ganache inside my piping bag. Yes, that ganache is nice, smooth and shiny. It's beautiful. And then what I'm going to do is to take the ganache and put them on the side until it cool down. I will say probably two to three hours. During this time, I am going to line up my uh, sheet pen with uh, parchment paper. So once the ganache is going to be cold enough, do not put your ganache in the refrigerator because it's going to be hard too fast. I will leave the ganache room temperature for about a couple hours and then normally should be the right consistency to pipe. You really want to have a consistency that is pipeable, not too liquid, but not too hard. I like to use a little pen spray huh? so that uh, stick my parchment paper. And then my piece of paper, tac, 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 voila, a little bit. Now my ganache is, uh, is hard enough, I can tell it doesn't leak and I can see when I touch it, uh, it's a really nice uh, feeling and smooth, not too liquid and not too hard. So now it's time to pipe the chocolate ganache. So this recipe will make about uh, 40 chocolate truffles. I'm going to put this in a cooler just a little bit and then starting to temper my chocolate. What is tempered chocolate? Uh, in a couple of uh, sentences, I'm going to try my best to explain as easy as possible for you to understand. So pretty much you have your chocolate. You buy your chocolate. The chocolate contains cocoa butter, cocoa paste. There is some sugar. There is some uh, vanilla extract. Sometimes there is lecithin, soy lecithin to it. All of those ingredients need to be combined, right? So when you melt your chocolate, all of your, the ingredients of your chocolate are being dispersed. And the goal to temper chocolate is to bring back everything together. And that's what's going to create the shiniest and the snap. The only ingredients that you are tampering inside the chocolate is the cocoa butter. Everything else will remain the same, but the cocoa butter, that's the ingredients that you're going to tamper. Uh, so be careful when you are buying chocolate, just to make sure it contains some cocoa butter. Otherwise, if there is wax, it is not chocolate. So I'm going to melt the chocolate in the microwave one minute at a time. 
just to make sure the chocolate is being melted evenly. My uh, chocolate has been melted for a couple of minutes in the microwave. I'm going to mix it really well and then put it back in the microwave for another minute. And you want to melt it at 45 degrees Celsius, which is this in Fahrenheit. All right, so now I am exactly at 45 degrees Celsius. What I want to do is to add crystals, meaning this chocolate, it is already tampered. The way company works when they do their little drops like this is they tamper the big mass and then you have droppers that drop little coins like this on the mat. It's going to crystallize and once it reach the bag for packaging, those little pistols are already tampered. So science has proven that by adding 3% of crystals inside your chocolate will be enough to tamper the whole mass. So pretty much this is what I'm going to do right now. So my chocolate is at 45 degrees Celsius, which pretty much destabilize all the molecules. And now I want to bring back everything together by adding a little percentage of tamper chocolate. And you don't want to add too much because you're going to have uh, lumps inside your chocolate. So you really have to find the sweet spot, but you already find it. You're in Wolf's Kitchen. And of course you want to agitate your chocolate. So you know when your chocolate is uh, tamper, um, when, um, is setting pretty fast. So we're going to do a little test. So I'm going to show you how your chocolate should look like when it's tamper. I'm going to bring down to 32 degrees Celsius, which is this in Fahrenheit, and then my chocolate should be tamper. But we're still gonna do a test. All right, so I have no more lumps. I am at 32 degrees Celsius. Let's do a test. I am taking a little piece of paper and I'm going to take a little bit of chocolate and leave my piece of paper on the side and see how long it's going to take to crystallize. If it takes more than two minutes, that means your chocolate is definitely not tamper. You see it's starting to set on the side and it's, it's pretty shiny. Um, that's a really good sign that your chocolate is tamper. So at this stage, my chocolate is tamper. So yours is also tamper, I'm assuming, right? Now you want to work fast because the chocolate will set pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is to take a fork and my truffle and then dip the truffle inside the chocolate. And then and tap, tap, tap to remove the excess of chocolate. And then bloop, inside my cacao powder. And then I have another spoon to instantly put the cacao powder on the top of my chocolate truffle. Let's have fun. And then I can repeat the same thing with different topping. So a little trick, if you like to get a different flavor, you can use that same recipe and add a little bit of orange zest inside the cream and then you're going to have an orange flavor. You can do that with lemon uh, and any kind of citrus pretty much. That's just gonna enhance 
the flavor of your ganache. So this is it everyone. This is how to make uh, those beautiful chocolate truffle. This one is a feuilletine, which is a crunchy, uh, thin crepe. Um, this one, of course, American style. We have our beautiful uh, uh, sprinkles and then the classic chocolate truffles. I'm a classic guy, so I'm going to try the chocolate truffles. Mm. That's a perfect treat. I don't know if there is a coffee drinker, but that with the coffee, that will be amazing. And this is it everyone, this is how to make a beautiful chocolate truffles. Today we have three kinds. We have the feuilletine, the sprinkles and the cacao powder. And it's up to your creativity to bring even more topping. So if you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe, tell your friends, tell your friends to tell their friends and do not forget to hit the little bell so you can be notified each and every single recipe. Until then, au revoir and see you next time in Rolls Kitchen.